Hey guys, it's Rob, and uh, thanks for checking out my show. So welcome to all of you, whoever you're watching around the world. I know the blog that I am um, doing this with. My blog has people from like Malaysia and Israel and everything. So uh, great, and thanks for uh, checking this out, for checking the blog out. I'll post uh, all of our details at the end of the end of the blog. Um, first of all. I want to clarify one of the posts that happened uh, a couple days ago. I think there might be some confusion about the post done about the Settlers of Catan Monopoly card. So right here I have the card in question. This is from my third edition of Settlers of Catan. I don't know if people can see it. Monopoly card. It's a little hard to read. Essentially what this card says is that when you play this card, announce one type of resource, all other players must give you all resource cards of that type. So, the tip I was trying to get across, and I know it was confusing to at least one person that I talked to, this card down here for a second, was before playing this card, you ask your fellow players whether they wanted to trade for a resource. So you would say, I need wood. Does anyone want to trade for wood? Secretly, you're doing this because you want them to get, you want to know if they have the resource so that you can play that card. So if all the people go, yeah, I got lots of wood, I'll trade wood for brick, you know, I got tons, you can go, great, all right, play this card, I say wood, now all of you give me wood. Uh, obviously, in the reverse, if you say, oh, I need wood, does anyone want wood, and everyone's like, oh, no, I don't got any wood, well, then obviously you don't want to play that card for wood, so you can either save it or play it for another resource. So that was that little tip, the little controversial tip that, uh, that you can do for settlers using that card. If uh, you didn't get the post, check out the post on the blog and uh, read it, and hopefully that will make sense to you. So just clearing that one up. Uh, moving on here. Uh, for those of you who have checked the blog out before and read the post on Think Geek, which is that awesome, awesome place where you can get all kinds of cool geek stuff, awesome website, one of the things that I wanted to get was this right here. And this is the Doctor Who cookie jar, the TARDIS cookie jar. You can probably see that there. That was one of the things on my kind of wish list on ThinkGeek. Ended up getting it, not actually at ThinkGeek, because shipping to Canada is so expensive. Ended up getting it on uh, eBay. But uh, now that I've had it for a couple weeks and I had a chance to use it out and bake some cookies and put them in there, I think I'll do just a quick review of uh, this particular thing. So starting off, uh, first of all, to say, I love the thing. Um, I've had lots of cookies in there, and I actually had uh, my roommate didn't even know what it was for when I opened it up to get a cookie. And he was like, "Oh, it's a cookie jar!" So uh, pretty cool overall. Um, the packaging that it came in is right here. It's kind of an open box. Uh, it's you know got a sort of Doctor Who look to it. The side you can see Doctor Who. It says "Try Me." Of course, warning. Probably telling you not to choke on the cookies. Crazy warnings. Uh, cost about 30 bucks US, give or take. Uh, packaging, nothing special. I would give that packaging like a 5 out of 10. Doesn't really protect it. Just kind of a, a general packaging. The actual look of the cookie jar itself, I'll give you a, let you get another look in case you missed it. I think that looks pretty sweet. Like I'd give this an 8 out of 10 for looks. Uh, he's got the little sign there. I don't know how well you can see that. The police box. It's got the siren on top. It's uh, for actual looks. It's pretty cool, and like I said, I give that probably an eight out of ten. Um, obviously, this is not just a model it's a cookie jar, so it's got to have some functionality to it too. So at the functionality side, um, not too bad. Probably give that about an eight out of ten. If you open it up, you can uh, see how many cookies it actually holds there. At least I'm gonna try to see. Probably about a dozen um, of your average size cookies, I guess you would call it. Uh, the other nice thing is that this slides out for easy cleaning so you can see how many cookies are actually can actually kind of go into this I'll uh, I'll post in the show notes the Think Geek um, link so you can see the actual size but I think it stands about maybe a foot in height and eight or nine inches kind of going the other way another cool thing about it that's not really functionality I guess as much as look is that when you close it So you can see there, it makes the light and it makes the sound as if the TARDIS is taken off and the Doctor is off on a, another crazy adventure. Like I said, about $30 American price, i maybe give it a 7 out of 10. And overall, I would give the Doctor Who TARDIS cookie jar about a 7 out of 10. So definitely a good gift for, you know, 
under 30 for the geek in your family, place to put your cookies and have some fun with the Who. So uh, before I wrap things up here, um, I want to talk quickly about Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Finally saw it on Saturday, about a, a week after it came out, which I don't like to do. I like to see movies when they come out, especially big ones like that. Uh, so far, it's doing pretty good. It's pushing something like $200 US and that worldwide, so almost at the half a, um, half a billion dollar mark already in like what, two weeks or whatever. Um, honestly, I love it. I mean, I love all the Harry Potter movies. They're all good. Sure, they make mistakes here and there and add things and do things that I... Ooh, that was never in the book. Doesn't make sense. They could have done this or that. Um, overall, good movie. Uh, one of the thing that both this book or this movie and the movie before was starting to get into like the coupling and the relationships. You know, saw Ron and Hermione a little bit, and then obviously into the to this next book we see it a bit more. Harry and Ginny, other people, kind of coupling off to. So my question for everybody out there is, uh, in the romantic coupling area for the girls. Uh, Harry, Ron, or let's say Draco, which one would you like to be romantically involved with? And for the guys like me, and for me this is a tough question, I'll actually give you my answer on next week's blog. Uh, Hermione, Ginny, and let's go Luna, because I know there's some Luna lovers out there. I've got a friend who's definitely a Luna lover. So yeah, Hermione, Ginny, and Luna for the, for the guys and for the girls, Ron, Harry, and Draco. So, uh, let me know what you think about that, and I guess we'll see you all in uh, a week. Uh, yeah, a week, and uh, so say we all.